Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be creating a new camera plate for the iFlight Vertigo. And why am I doing this? Well, it's a really nice frame and I don't really need camera plate protection, but I just want to do this because to be honest, I'm kind of sick of reviews and I just want to do something different. So let's get started. Maybe someone will learn something or two and might inspire them to do their own thing. So what we have inside first, what we have to take into consideration is 30 millimeter of height. Now that is from the bottom plate to the top plate. And then each plate from the top and the bottom is also two millimeters. So for example, right now we're going to go 30 millimeters up top. That'll cover, actually that was pretty small. All right, so that will cover the full height. However, we do have the little tabs that go into the upper frame and the bottom frame. So we're also, we're also going to create two more millimeters. So here's two more millimeters. And then here's another two millimeters. Now this might not be the best way to go about doing it, but this is the way that I usually do it and it works just fine. So there we go. And we're gonna go ahead and just do two millimeters. Okay, so let's take a look at what we just did here. That's very basic. So we could find this line here. This is gonna be part of the tab that will go into the upper frame to hold the camera plate in, in position. And the bottom here as well also, as you can tell right there, this should be two millimeters as well. All right, so we need to portray at least around 28 millimeters from the back of the first tab that's going to the front frame. So what we want to do is we want to take from the bottom one here and let's go around 28 millimeters. Now I'm going to just start with a basic square design for right now just to get reference. I know there's other ways to do this, but this is how I do it. All right, so right here what we have here just for like a little reference so you get an idea. This would be the tab that'll go in your upper frame. And then that would be, it's not the exact size here, but um, it just to give you a reference of what's really going on. We're going to erase these in a little bit. So you consider these that are going to go into the upper frame, the upper top plate, and this is going to go into the bottom plate, and that's what's going to hold it. So we're going to go out around uh, 28 millimeters in order for us to protect the camera. And we need to figure out where we're going to put the hole. Now the hole usually is going to be somewhere in the center from this one to this one here. So possibly around here, but we're going to calculate it on the uh, current plate. All right, so the hole is currently around 10 millimeters from the back of the first tab. So what we want to do is let's find the middle. And with the software here, we could easily find that. And we're just going to go 10 millimeters. And this is where we want the hole for the uh, camera to be. And we're just going to grab a circle and we're going to make it 2 millimeters here. There we go. So now we have our camera. This is where the camera is going to go in. This is the tab and then this is the tab. So let's go ahead and just erase this now. All right. Now we want to make sure we cover this. So I want to do some kind of like fangs, which is a, a really nice design that I also used to do on my, uh, what I did on my drone mesh split same frame. And I want to do that because it just adds this really nice uh, look to it that just makes it look super mean. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the arc here. I think I've found where I kind of want it to go. I think right around here is going to be nice, just like that. Maybe I should have dug this down a little bit more, but we'll see how well that looks. And also guys, a huge shout out to our sponsor, PCB Way. If it wasn't for them enabling me to create such prototypes and fail miserably every once in a while without really affecting anything because they're providing it free of charge for the open hardware projects that I have, for example, the F7 flight controller, the F4 flight controller that I released, those are all uh, awesomely sponsored by PCB Way and you should definitely check them out. All right, so next up is we need to figure out how high these are, and these should be two millimeters. We already got this, but we need to figure out its length. Now, its width is two millimeters, so that's just, we're not gonna have to worry about that. All we have to worry about is just the sizing here because the, the carbon fiber is already two millimeters, and that's how wide it is, and it'll just slide right into the hole. But we just wanna make sure we get the uh, length correct as well. So the length is around four millimeters. So we're going to erase this back here. So the top tab is four millimeters. So let's go ahead and set that up. Here's the first tab. So it's going to be four. And we're just going to drop this down. There we go. Bottom one, I think also the same. I'll just double check it right now. The bottom ones are slightly larger. Bottom ones are around 5.5 .5 millimeters. So, all right. So five. 0.5 millimeters It's okay if you go a little bit larger because you could just file some of it down. It might not look pretty, but it'll it'll be fine All right, so there we go now We have the upper and bottom plate and now there is also another dip that goes down and up So we need one around here somewhere possibly depending on the size difference <clears throat> So around four millimeters away here. We need a little 
tab. Let's see how far that is actually. Four millimeters is right around here. So, hmm. We can do is we could increase this right there and then we can set that up like that and like that all right and then we're going to drop this down here and we're actually going to erase these okay so this will kind of add something so i'm also going to drop a little arc on this as well so we're going to make this arc just slightly bigger it gives us just more uh, strength here oh, around here is going to be nice all right there we go that's looking way better now and here we can add also a line if we wanted to but um we'll see how we'll, what we're going to do with this in a bit all right so i've added some texture here so this is how the overall overall like, this is how it should go in this should be the top right here However, what I can already immediately notice is I think the size is wrong. One of these is wrong here. So I need to double check this. This should be two millimeters and it seems like it's much larger than two millimeters. So let's go back and double check this on the sketch. So let's just go, there we go. Yeah, well, no, it's perfect. So something is wrong here. Let's see, maybe this one. I think this is wrong. Yeah, this is supposed to be two millimeters. What happened here? All right, so good thing we caught that here because that would have been kind of um, a nightmare a little. So we might have to redo the arc right there since we got it from a different position. All right. So, but it's okay. We have the main point right there. Now we can just go back in arc and there we go. I think that's good now. So let's go ahead and take a look at it now. And we want to need this two millimeters and let's add some appearance to it. So we're going to say appearance and there it is. Carbon carbon twill there we go body boom yep this looks pretty nice hopefully it's going to be pretty great so there's also something you need to take note of especially when you're going to be putting something like this when you go ahead and see and see this these sharp corners are not going to be sharp they're going to be round like this so when you're going to put it in you're going to find it won't fit because there's this little extra chunk of uh of a carbon fiber left over so you what you would want to do is kind of push this down a little bit more and uh, depending on the type of thing so i'm going to push this down i think around point uh negative 0 0.5 so just 0.5 of a millimeter hopefully that'll give me the extra room i need uh to put it in because again these will be like uh, just a little sideways or you you could either just file it down you should be good but i'm gonna just go ahead and try uh, bringing it up 0 0.5 0 0.5 and we need that to be a negative there we go all right uh oh we have a little thingy here that should not be here okay we, we can fix this just like that boom there we go <clears throat> that looks pretty nice um I like it. It's good. Oh, maybe. No, it's good. So let's go ahead and remeasure this stuff. So let's just get an idea of how much we had here. How much space we had between the uh, the middle of this and the edge of this here. We have 17 millimeters of space. And here we have around 16, 17. So it's all around like a, a 17 millimeter circle, theoretical circle here. I don't think you'll need anything on the bottom there. Um, I think this will take most of the impact, especially if you're going head on. You're usually tilted anyways, and this is what's going to get hit. And uh, I think that's going to hold very well. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take it into the CNCing part. And the CNCing will come in a different video, which will be possibly the next video. Uh, so we're going to take this now, and it's really easy. So we're just going to do the sketch so we don't see it anymore. 
and now we're just gonna say uh, manufacturing manufacture there we go now we're in the cam model or the cam section new setup and now here what we have to do is we have to define a couple things so uh, what we want to do first you want to define the Z and the X and the Y axis Z is always going up Y axis is always going towards you this is how I like to think about it and the X axis is going left to right so for example if like the bed was coming towards you it was gonna hit you it's like why are you gonna hit me this is how I remember it hopefully it'll help someone I know it's kind of weird but uh, that's how I remember it so we still have to define it we want to go to select Z and um, I like to select Z and X oh no sorry Z and X there we go all right so what we can do is we could use one of the lines so we have to check Z axis and I'm going to say this is the Z axis so now it knows the Z axis and now it automatically jumped to X axis and this is what I want the X axis to be okay and that should be good and this is a very important place right here origin so where do you want this to start because this is really important when you're aligning everything so you you know you could have it start from here like when you zero everything out this would be the zero on your uh, on your what is it called on your CNC so let's go ahead and um, zero everything out uh, I'm gonna have it start from the corner I think up here I think that's the best place to do it actually so I'm gonna say stock box and then i'm going to choose a point and i'm going to choose this top left corner and oh, i think that's it stock is stock offset side offset i think zero yeah we don't need anything yeah we don't have stock right now but this is kind of nice because you could uh, simulate how much stock you have but it doesn't really matter right now okay and height very important it's two millimeters okay great and we'll start with the setup. So the setup is always very important to run because that'll give it, it just prepares everything. It tells it where to start, the size of the model, and where's the X and Y, and just these types of things. Now the next thing we want to do is, I always want to drill the holes first. What I'm planning on doing now is we're going to drill these holes first. So we're going to go to drilling. And I think, I don't know if I'm going to do it boring because the boring was pretty good last time, but I'm going to use a two millimeter end mill. So I'm just going to do just like a drill. That's it. Because I'm going to use a 2 millimeter end mill for this. I don't want to switch. So I'll cut this whole thing out with 2 millimeter end mill. Um, which here probably a 1 would have been better. But I think it'll be fine. We'll see what, what we're going to do with that. So first we want to create a tool here. Okay, so now I have to create a tool. And you can, you know, it depends on your machine. Uh, you can set this feeds and speeds also. So mine's I think a flat end mill. So we're going to call it a flat end mill. And... Um, it's going to be the diameter is the most important thing two millimeters Here I'm just gonna say six millimeters. It, it doesn't currently it doesn't matter for the type of application that I'm using it for So yeah, but yeah, that's it. it's just gonna be I think that's enough right now So to eight millimeter shoulder and the flute is six millimeter more than enough and yeah, that's fine and Three flutes doesn't really matter right now um, Just I just the most important thing is the diameter here and that's it. We're just gonna save it so I'm going to go ahead and do the plunge rate at around 825 millimeters per minute, which should be pretty good. Retract feed rate, it's fine. Uh, RPM, I've increased it to 15,000, which I found to work a little bit better. So 125. Plunge rate is the, the speed that it's going to go down, so it's really important. Geometry, now we're going to pick what's going to be drilled, and it's just that piece right there. Height, this is kind of important. Oh, I already remembered it from last time. That's really nice. So it does, uh, you, what you can do is, I usually like to do the model bottom. So from the model bottom, drop down one millimeter extra. So you can see this blue line, it's just gonna go down one millimeter extra from the model. And here we have the retract height. If you reduce these, then uh, you could actually save a bit of time. So as you can tell, I'm just dropping that. So it doesn't need to come back all the way up here to go do the next process. All right, so this looks good. We have the clearance, we have the retract height. Uh, it'll retract this much to go do another hole, but currently we don't have another hole. And this looks great. And then it's gonna drill one millimeter below the stock. So we're all done for that one. So we're gonna do the boring dwell. So it'll go down, wait a second and go down. Oh, I mean, it's not gonna wait, but it's just gonna go down and go down, go down slowly. I think it's just gonna keep pecking at it. And uh, I think that's, that's gonna be just fine. It's just a hole. There, it just looks good. All right, so next up is just, we need to cut out the sides here. And we're gonna go ahead and do the uh, 2D contour. 
All right, so this is where it gets important here. So we want to take note of our plunge rate and feed rates. Yeah, I'm going to put 200 millimeters per minute for such a thing here. Plunge feed rate 125, that's fine. The plunge is the speed it goes down. Now we just choose the contours. So there we go. We just chose it. So we should cut all of these, just making sure everything looks good. All right. And then next we're going to do this one. And again, stock bottom uh, 0.2 millimeter offset. Okay, that's fine. No, not stock. We need model. Model bottom 0.2. Those look okay. We can drop this down a little bit. Okay. And now this is the passes. This is really important. Um, so it saved my previous one, which is really nice. So we're going to say the maximum roughing pass. So it's going to drop down 0.4 millimeters at a, every pass. And then the last one is going to drop down 0.2. And I'm just double checking everything. So we do have this checked in. If you don't see it, it's because you don't have it checked. So there we go. We have that checked in. And now I want to actually add tabs. Where are the tabs? Oh, there's already some in there. But I want to add them manually. So we're going to say we're going to keep the, we'll keep the rectangle tab position um, at points so I'm gonna place these manually so I'm gonna put one here and then I'm gonna put another one here so you want to do this on flat surfaces and you also want to do this on a surface you'll be able to remove which is really important um, but it's so small it should hold just fine but I'll just add another one around here I think I'll be able to let's see around here yeah, that looks great. We'll just add another one just for extra rigidity. Right back here. There we go. Right here. Okay, that looks great. And now I'm just going to double check on the tabs if they're going to be work great. Okay, so as you can tell, it's uh, it should theoretically be fine if we center this out perfect. Um, okay, look, all looking good. Let's go ahead and press OK. And now we can just watch it. And see how it's going to do this so here i'm just closing in so this is the tab you see it's going to go up here so it leaves that tab it actually looks like a pretty big line this is 0.2 this is around 0.5 millimeter of a tab but it's okay it gives us a little extra here's another tab so we're going to have to do we're going to have to go one two three four uh five passes so on the fifth pass or possibly even the fourth pass it should be done but it wouldn't matter because we have the tabs in place and that shouldn't make it drop so it'll just be hanging in the air until it finishes and then we should have our new camera plate all right guys and well that's it this looks pretty good i like how it's going to come out i like how it looks like usually what i do is i do like a 0.2 millimeter 3d print to make sure the sizing is correct but for this one we're just going to go ahead and cut it um and we'll be cutting it in the next episode let me know if you guys like this content let me know if you want to see more of this let me also know if you want to see this more in in more detail um so the next step i'll even show you every single part of the process so you get an idea and currently i'm looking for cheap cnc machines so uh, i could review on the channel like proper review and do the projects on with those so it'll enable more people to play around with cnc machines because they're really fun and they're a lot faster than 3d printers in most cases like this will be done super quick not like a 3d printer which is really nice sometimes and well that's it guys i'll have a link to everything down below also some really nice cheap end mills that i'm going to be using uh, which i also used last time and i'm planning on using those until they wear out because it gives us a really good uh, idea of how well they were they're pretty cheap bottom of bang good they're called the drill pro set uh they're, they're working out really great uh on this carbon fiber once you get it just right and uh, we'll get into that in the next video and we'll also start cutting this out in the next video so and again i'll see you in the next one guys peace out